Yeah. 
Incarnate <laughs> he has come again in the form of Mishra. <laughs> Haridas Thakur was the best of all dancers. Okay, so. so today, or this then, yeah, this day is actually the celebration of Srila Prabhupada receiving this sannyas order of life. September. 17th, 1959, the exact date. It's also Vishwa Rupa So I'll speak first on Vishwa Rupa Mahotsava, because that's quick. There's a little information that's available. Umagyan, Timadandasya, Ginajana Salakaya, Chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri guruvenu maha 
Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Today and as a very sacred day on our line Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyasa and began to search for his brother Vishwarup. While searching on this day, he found out that his brother was in Pandarpur and that he had left his body. He had taken samadhi on the bank of the river Bhima. Mahaprabhu was observing Chaturmasya very strictly for four months. He shaved his hair. Before this year, he never shaved for four months, nor did, or did he cut his nails. He, he observed all the rules and rituals of the Chaturmasya season. And it was so now that his brother had passed away and this news reached Lord Chaitanya, he performed this austerity. It is said that Vishwarup became Sankaranya, Maharaj in the line of uh, let me see what was the actual line. I believe he took it from Lakshmipati Tirtha, who was also in the line of the Gaudiya. <clears throat> so this is, there's some information mentioned here. And of course, um, Vishwarup, we don't hear so much about him, being the older brother of Lord Chaitanya. When Sachi Mata had learned that Vishwarup had taken sannyas. Prior to that, she had arranged for his marriage, but upon hearing that he was getting married, he split town. <laughs> he took off. <laughs> There's no life without a wife. It's simply only a strife. No, well, that doesn't fit, does it? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, if I tell some jokes, please excuse me. <laughs> okay, so when he found out his mother was organizing his marriage, he left. And he was using, he was getting an, a lot of association with Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya would speak to him about the scriptures, Vedanta, and he would study and hear from and associate and practically spend his whole day in association with Advaita Acharya. And then, of course, because of that association, when it was time to enter family life, he had developed complete renunciation. And he just left. He never told anyone, not even his brother. And no one knew where he was. Finally, Lord Chaitanya had found out he went to Pandarpur, and later he left his body in a place near Pandarpur called Solapur. When Lord Chaitanya was also associating with and hearing from Advaita Acharya, Sachi Mata was thinking her son was going to follow the path of his older brother, and she became alarmed. So she, in her mind, she started to find fault with Advaita Acharya. And she, she said, in her mind, she didn't speak it. She said, he is not Advaita. He is Dvaita. Dvaita means dual, a Dvaita means one, or single. So he's presenting himself as a well-wisher, but actually he's causing me great pain because <laughs> he's taking my children and making them sannyasis. It's terrible when you take sannyas. Your parents think, oh my God. My mother said, oh, no grandchildren. <laughs> oh, what to do? Oh. I said, you have my sister. Just hope she can, she can help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grandchildren, we live for that. <laughs> what will we do? We get old and we're useless. But if we get some grandkids, life comes to back. Life comes back again. That's well, just the way it is. Sanyas, no, no, no phone numbers. At least before, 
Nowadays we got everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was living in a little ashram up on the hill with a few other brahmacharis. We had no newspapers, no phones, no, no news of anything in the material world. We didn't even know who was the president of the United States. <laughs> It was a funny story because I was with Radhanath Maharaj and so after being together for many years up there, he finally left and went out preaching. So he went to one high school and he was preaching and he, he was preaching to the students and he said, you know, you know, you have to be careful, you know, because once you graduate here, then President Nixon will arrange for you to get drafted and send you to Vietnam. So one student said, at the end of the class, uh, excuse me, sir, but President Nixon's not the president. <laughs> and the Vietnam War has been over for five years. <laughs> uh, Maharaj didn't even know it. And then the boy named the president, present president, and Maharaj said, I never heard of him. <laughs> so, so we were like that. <laughs> We, we were living in, in like isolation, just chanting, dancing, and eating prasadam, so, and working. Okay, so it wasn't that only a, like that. So yeah, so his mother, it seems like all mothers are against kids taking sannyas, like that. Hari, becoming a Hare Krishna is bad enough, but taking sannyas, oh God. <laughs> better to take poison. <laughs> Even devotion, devotee mothers, they say, you know, I know I'm a devotee and you're a devotee, but don't, you know, don't disappoint me. First have, a, <laughs> first have about 12 kids and then you can take sannyas. <laughs> we, we love grandkids. <laughs> So yeah, it's just really difficult in this age. But Vishwarup, he just left. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did the same thing. He left his mother, he left his wife, who was young, she was only 19 years old. And, um, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to, to the home of Advaita Acharya in Chantipur and stayed there for one month, just after he took sannyas, and then he was going to go to Vrindavan but his mother, along with many of his associates, came to spend some time with him. And his mother came and she said, my dear son, <laughs> you know, uh, I know you're a sannyasi, but still I'm your mother. <laughs> and she said, well, you know, Jagannath Puri and Navadweep are two rooms in the same house, so don't go to Vrindavan, <laughs> go to Jagannath Puri. So in order to please his mother, Lord Chaitanya did. Although he took sannyas, and the principle is you leave everything behind, nothing, zero. Break all connections with all family relationships or former life friends. And just, you know, focus on preaching. Um, Lord Chaitanya, because his mother was such a, I mean, she's not an ordinary person to be the mother of Lord Chaitanya. So he wanted to please his mother. And he said, you know, he said to his mother, dear mother, my body belongs to you. He said that to her. And therefore, how can I give up my body? So because it's yours. So therefore he agreed. And he stayed in Jagannath Puri for 18 years and six years of those, six years additionally he traveled in the south, but out of 18 years, he didn't leave Pori. Of course, he did go to, he went on one trip to South India and came back. So, uh, just to please his mother. <laughs> Prabhupada writes in the uh, sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam that I want to sit down and finish writing Srimad Bhagavatam but it's hard for me to stay in one place because the mothers of my disciples are always uh, causing me difficulty. <laughs> so I'm asking all my sannyas disciples to take up the curse. <laughs> 
and stay and travel and so I can stay in one place. Otherwise, if I have to keep traveling, I will never finish the Bhagavatam. The Prabhupada writes that in the Purport of Sixth Canto. When Narada Muni curses, uh, when uh, Daksha curses Narada Muni never to stay in one place for three days, Prabhupada said, I have similarly been cursed by the disciples of my, of my, my parents of my disciples. So it's difficult. Okay, so uh, he disappeared in Pandrapur. He's non different from Sri Chaitanya. And as an incarnation of Sankarshad, he merged into the body of Lord Nityananda and remained mixed there until Lord Nityananda left the planet. So this is a little bit about Vishwarup. We don't know much more. There's a few similar statements you'll find in Chaitanya Charitamrita. We like to focus a lot on today with Srila Prabhupada's sannyas, initiation. In 1945, Srila Prabhupada had an unusual dream. His Guru Maharaj Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati before, appeared before him in the dream and said, take sannyas. It says he woke up in an intentionally emotional state thinking, how horrible. <laughs> He knew it was not an ordinary dream, yet he seemed a difficulty and unlikely. He had five children, three boys and two girls, a family, a wife, and a flourishing chemical business. Prabhupada was situated. And so, although he, he remembered his sannyas, uh, his Guru Maharaj told him, go to the West and preach Krishna consciousness. Now he's getting these dreams, and it wasn't the first dream of his the Guru Maharaj encouraging him to take sannyas. Prabhupada thought about it, but didn't change his life. Three years later, in, in, in 18, 1948, he closed his factory in Lucknow. <clears throat> Before then, he had started a big factory in Lucknow, and he had great success, but gradually the business started to dwell, dwindle. And then everything was starting to fall apart. His, wi his wife, who was really not very supportive of his Krishna consciousness, was somewhat becoming more and more, what we say, um, difficult to deal with. She was always wanting more and more of his time, and he wanted to spend more and more time practicing Krishna consciousness. And then, of course, in 1950, he had a really an intense dream. And it's described here, I'll read it. It says here, One night, Abai had a striking dream, the same dream he had several times before during his days as a householder. In 1950, he retired from his business. His business was practically already collapsed. His marriage was pretty much finished. He had been living in Vrindavan. Now he has a dream. Bhakti Siddhanta appeared to him. And Bhakti Siddhanta looked very scholarly, tall, really effulgent, coming from the spiritual world with all power. And he said, Abai, follow me. <laughs> Prabhupada wasn't inclined to take sannyas. But he knew that if he was going to preach Krishna consciousness and follow the orders of his spiritual master, that ashram was the most suitable for him and for anyone. So he woke with wonder, thinking, oh, this is the same instruction I've been getting. Now, take, now he decided, yes, I must take sannyas. He had been living a little bit alone for in Vrindavan for a year, but now it became clear that this was his next step. So he decided to go ahead and make plans. And at the time, the Gaudiya Math had split into many, many smaller Maths, and the main Math was the Chaitanya Math in uh, Navadvipdam. You can still go there. That's the headquarters of the Gaudiya Math. And at the time, Bhakti Vilas Tirtha Maharaj was the person who was the, uh, 
the head sannyasi, that he was the moth leader. So Prabhupada wrote him a letter explaining that he has some books that he had written and he would like to come and join the moth and get his books published and, and take sannyas. And please, maybe the Guru Maharaj wants, uh, wants me to preach in the West, please give me support. Bhakti Tirta Vilas Maharaj, Bhakti Vilas Tirta Maharaj, I'm sorry. It didn't go along with the idea at all. In fact, he, he wasn't dismissive of it. He just said, you come, you join our moth. We have so many books we have already in line for publishing, and we will, and once we take care of that, we will consider publishing your books. And you join, and after some time, if it's decided, we will, you can accept the sannyas order of life. As far as going to the West, don't be hasty with such ideas. <laughs> so he was quite discouraged from the response of Bhakti Tirta Vilas, Bhakti Vilas Tirta Maharaj. But Prabhupada had spent some time at the Gaudiya Math in Mathura, and the head Math leader was uh, Keshava Maharaj. Keshava Maharaj and, and Srila Prabhupada got along quite well. So he wrote a letter to Keshava Maharaj explaining. And Keshava Maharaj wrote back, Ab Abai had been living in a renunciate for nine years now. And he was thinking, he was living in Vrindavan, we can, you can go and see at the Radha Dambadar temple, Srila Prabhupada's rooms there, he has two beautiful rooms. They've been renovated before, they were just more dirt, mud floors, Prabhupada lived in one room, small little room, and there's where he wrote many of his Bhaktivedanta purports, which were the first three volumes of the first canto, which he carried to America when he first came, and those were the things that he sold when he first got to America, like that. So he, Bhakti um, Keshava Maharaj, uh, uh, decided, yes, you come and live with us, and. I think it is good. You have been performing sannyas now, although you're in a white dress, you've been living in... Yes, and if you want to preach, then sannyas is the only way. So he came, and on September 17th, 1959, there was a big ceremony arranged. And I'll read a little bit about the ceremony here. Yeah. In the, in the moth itself, there was a 20, in the 50 by 25 foot deity room on the second floor of the Kesavaji moth, a group of devotees sat before the deities of Radha and Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. The deities were colorfully dressed in royal clothing and silver crowns. Radharani had right, Radharani's right hand face palm forward in the direction for the worshiper. At her side, her left hand was holding a flower for Krishna. Krishna stood like a dancer, placing his right leg in a casual tiptoe pose before his left, playing his long silver flute, which he gracefully held to his red lips. His long black hair reached down past his shoulder, and the garland of marigolds around his neck reached down to his knees. On his right stood the deity of Lord Chaitanya, his right arm raised, left arm on his side. Lord Chaitanya was like this. His body straight, feet together. He was a soft golden color and he had large eyes, well-formed red mouth, and a straight black hair down to his shoulders. One level below, the deities were pictures of the spiritual masters in disciplic succession, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj and Bhakti Pragya Keshava Maharaj. Abhay sat on a mat of kusa grass besides 90 year old Sanatan, also to receive sannyas that day. <laughs> he was 90 years old. Whoa. Now you might ask him what took him so long. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had plans to live to 200 years. <laughs> Sitting opposite the two candidates, Narayan Madharaj, Keshe Maharaj, disciple, prepared to conduct the ceremony of mantras and offering grains and ghee into the fire. 
a Kinchana Das Babaji Maharaj, Kinchana Krishna Das Babaji, Abhai's god brother, known for his sweet singing, played Burdung and sang Vaishnav Bhajans. Sitting on a raised dais, his holding his BP, Keshava Maharaj presided. Since there had been no notices or invitations, only a few Math residents were present. Narayan Maharaj chanted the required mantras and then sat back silently Why? Keshava Maharaj lectured. Then, to everyone's surprise, Keshava Maharaj asked Abai to speak. Prabhupada Abai had not expected this. As he looked around at the gathering of devotees, he understood that the common language was Hindi. Only Keshava Maharaj and a few others spoke English, yet he knew he must speak in English. He spoke in English because that was what, was going, what he would be doing, preaching in English. After a by speech, in, each initiator received their, their cloth, their dundas, and all the decorations along with Telsi neck beads like that, and their sannyas mantras. Keshava Maharaj said that Abai would now be known as Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada <laughs> and Sanatan would be known as Muni Maharaj. After the ceremony, the two sannyasi posed for a photo. You seen, bro? Have you seen that photo? Yeah. Now, anyway, I'll tell you a little side story. <laughs> This was in New Vrindavan. Ms. Prabhupada came to New Vrindavan. This was in 1971? No, 1970, I think. 70 or 71, Prabhupada came to New Vrindavan. So Prabhupada was sitting outside in the lawn with a group of devotees. <clears throat> and one devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, oh, that's the picture, you have it? Yeah. Can you post it up here? Can we get it up there somehow? No. Okay, so one devotee who had seen that picture said to Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada, my friend, he saw that picture of you like that, and you look, you were like, and he said, why is your Guhur Maharaj look so sad? <laughs> And, and Prabhupada's just listening. So the, the boy said, and I told him, yes, he's sad because this world is full of birth, death, disease, and old age. <laughs> Prabhupada said, let me see that photo. And so they showed him the photo. Prabhupada said, that was one of my happiest moments. <laughs> <laughs> he looks very... Uh, so the boy didn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, so Prabhupada was there. And then another little innuendo that happened during that ceremony was that while the mantras were being chanted by Narayan Maharaj to initiate the ceremony, Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj was singing beautiful bhajans. He was chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And it was indicated that he was chanting too loud, and this was the mantras were not being heard by everyone. So there was some signal to Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj to chant softer, so he did. But our Srila Prabhupada looked at him and said, <laughs> <laughs> and then Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj said later, I knew he would be successful. <laughs> He had full faith in the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. Yeah. And it does, that was Prabhupada's uh, success. Of course, he had many qualities that made his mission a success, but, that, but he emphasized kirtan. That was Prabhupada, always emphasized kirtan. With a little tam-tam drum in the middle of Thompson Square Park, in 1965, with a few hippies who were his followers, he went out and started playing, banging on this little drum, and singing Hare Krishna in the middle of this park. Nobody knew what Hare Krishna was, and his followers were kind of like, 
you know, all new. They didn't know anything. They didn't, all they knew is we liked him. <laughs> he was a nice guy. <laughs> That's the one thing about how Prabhupada started the movement. Nobody could understand what he was saying because <laughs> of his English brogue and his accent and, and his deep voice. Even when I first joined, when I used to listen to Prabhupada's lectures, I couldn't, some of the lectures, I couldn't figure out what he was saying. <laughs> Anybody ever have that trouble when you first heard Prabhupada? Yes. Yeah, it was like that. After a while, you get accustomed. But uh, yeah, Prabhupada just, just went out into a park with a little drum, and all the local park residents, the, the residents of the the Bowery came along to listen, Prabhupada banging on his drum and chanting Hare Krishna. Brahmananda, Kirtananda, Gargamuni were dancing. <laughs> How could you do dancing in those days was a little bit different than what we do now. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> That's how we danced in those days. <laughs> <laughs> kind of starry-eyed and like, you know. <laughs> then I was, you know, so, yeah, Prabhupada had full faith in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So this, this account of Prabhupada taking sannyas is a very important part of our whole practice of Krishna consciousness because it really illustrates Prabhupada's compassion you know, Prabhupada didn't really, f he wanted to stay in India and spread Krishna consciousness in India. But everything he did in India failed. He opened up that thing in Jhansi, which is not too far from Delhi. And then he was preaching there and having, inviting people to come, gradually people were coming. But then the lady well, was the Mrs. Munshi, she was a. Uh, she had. She had some influence in that area, and so she wanted to make that place that Prabhupada had a, a women's sewing club. <laughs> so using her influence, she was able to push Prabhupada out, and he lost his building. Yeah, that's when he started the League of Devotees. That was the original name of the Hare Krishnas. We were called the League of Devotees. Prabhupada coined that. So yeah, everything Prabhupada did in Eng India went wrong. Nothing, nothing went right. Because Krishna didn't want him to preach in India. Krishna wanted him to come to the West. Sometimes we see that. Sometimes everything is going wrong. That's why, because Krishna wants you to do something else. <laughs> it could be like that. I'm not saying that's the absolute truth, but <laughs> it's like that sometimes. Yeah, so this is um, this is, is pretty much the essence of Prabhupada's taking sannyas, like that. So Prabhupada said in his lecture, sannyas means civil suicide. Civil suicide, like that. And when you take sannyas in the Western countries, nobody knows anything anyway. So. <laughs> Why do you wear orange? Oh, because it's my favorite color. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> so, the color orange represents fire. That's what the color means. It represents fire, and fire means to burn up all material desires. That's why the color orange, that's the actual meaning. Yeah. So yeah. So Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, "I gave up wife and children. Now I have three hundred children without no botheration of wife." <laughs> he said that to his devotees <laughs> when he was first joined the movement. <laughs> Prabhupada was, you know, he was who he was. <laughs> <coughs> but because of he, 
made this sacrifice and uh, it wasn't something that he had planned, but Krishna had a plan. And here it says, Prabhupada quoted this verse when he realized what was happening. Yashyaham aganu grimnami harishyaitad dhanam shanai tato dhanam tvatap yasya swajana dukha dukitam. This is spoken by Krishna. It's in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 88th chapter. Krishna says, when I feel especially merciful towards someone, I gradually take away all his material possessions, his friends, his relatives. Then, rejecting this poverty-stricken and most f f wretched fellow, <laughs> so all the family members, everybody uh, rejects you. Yeah, you become person non grata. <laughs> In the material world, sannyas is recommended. In the spiritual world, it's better to be grihasta. <laughs> because in the spiritual world, there's nothing to renounce. <laughs> and in the material world, there's nothing to enjoy. <laughs> so that's the ashrams for the different places. <laughs> of course, that's not very popular. <laughs> you are. So ladies can take sannyas also, <laughs> but that's called renunciation. What is women's sannyas? Is that uh, you put on white and you live at a holy place, and you dedicate the rest of your life to serving that particular deity at that holy place, and then when you leave the world, you go back home, back to Godhead, no botheration with anything else. So although officially the formal ashram of sannyas is not given to women, still women are allowed to take the mood of renunciation. There are many devotees in our movement who are ladies, of course, many of them are advanced in age, but they are wearing white and performing amazing ceremonies, I mean amazing services in preaching Krishna consciousness to others. So it's not simply relegated to male bodies, even the women can develop renunciation. And this is the whole mood of our, our movement, is ultimately to renounce everything material and they take up everything spiritual. Of course, when we're young, we still want to fulfill our material desires and emotional needs. So sometimes the household life can be entered into it. But the, the purpose of household life is to teach you you don't need it. That's the purpose. <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to learn the hard way. <laughs> so, that's, this is not a very popular class, is it? No. <laughs> so, I don't usually give these classes to mixed audience, but I thought, since it's Prabhupada Sannyas Day, so <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> but that's okay because our home mood is Vairagya. Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga. Our home mood is to renounce. Uh, renounce everything material and take up everything spiritual. Like that. Of course, when one is, whatever ashram you're in, stay in it and become expert in Krishna consciousness in that ashram. And then, even if you're in the Grihastha Ashrata, you can develop renunciation if you very strictly and carefully follow the principles. And Prabhupada says, when the man is first class and the woman is chaste, then there's no need for renunciation. In other words, there's no need for changing ashrams. But to come to that stage of practice requires determination. Like that. So, from different angles of view, vision, uh, renunciation always is the goal. That's the whole goal of our. I remember uh, myself and Prahlad Ananda Maharaj back in the year 2008, we just started to, decided to start Brahmachari Conference. 
Maharaj inspired me, so I organized a Brahmachari conference. So one day I was writing, you know, like little things about advertising it, and I said, this, this, we are having a conference for renunciants. And guess what? A whole bunch of ladies lined up for the conference. <laughs> and uh, they said, we're all renounced. <laughs> Can we come? I said, well, I'm not sure this was the idea that I had in mind. <laughs> and then I organized the first Brahmachari conference in 2008 in America. And uh, Devotee from uh, Croatia, he's now sannyasi, what's his name, Bhakti Ananda Tirta. He was the president of San Diego. He heard that I was looking for a place to organize the conference. He calls me up and says, Maharaj, have it in San Diego. I said, he said, I'll facilitate everything. So I did. So we organized the first conference and about 60 brahmacharis showed up. And uh, Vijay Prabhu was there, Dhanavir Maharaj, Bhakti Vikash Maharaj, and who else? Myself and Dravida. We were the ones who were speaking at conference. It was a very successful conference. And, uh, and so the second year we decided to do it again, but there was a drop in attendance from 65 to about 40, 35, like that. So we thought maybe we're doing something wrong. <laughs> so then I decided maybe America is not the place to have it. So I spread the idea into London. And so the devotees in London got fired up about it. So Bhaktivedanta Manor decided to have it, to hold it. So that was the next year, and 95 brahmacharis showed up. These were the European brahmacharis, most of them from. Germany, Finland, like that, came. Uh, I don't know, any of you came to that conference? No. You did? Okay. Yeah. All right. That was, yeah, you remember that, huh? Yeah, wonderful. I don't know which year, but one of them. Yeah, it was around the year 2011. Yeah. I think so, yeah. 2010 or 2011? 2010 was the year. Yeah. yeah. And we had 95 brahmacharis, and Kadamakana Maharaj came, and Jayadweta Maharaj came. And we had an amazing conference for about five days. And uh, so it was quite successful. The next year we did it again in, Bra in Bhaktivedanta Manor. And so this year, that second year, it was over 100 brahmacharis came the second time. So it got better. But guess what happened the third year? <laughs> Bhaktivedanta Manor said, we need the facilities you're using for the Brahmachari Christmas so we can hold some weddings. <laughs> so we got pushed out. <laughs> and then I was thinking where to go. So I decided to try Radhadesh. And then I said, could we? And Radhadesh said, yeah, you can hold it here. But we have to charge each brahmachari 365 euros <laughs> for room and board <laughs> and everything else. And I said, the brahmacharis can't afford that. <laughs> so, <coughs> c'est la vie. <laughs> that was the last. And, and I couldn't find a place that would facilitate it without causing it. Because the, the first two, the first three years we did, I mean, Bhakti Ananda Goswami, he, he put out money from the temple to facilitate everything. He was really helpful. And Bhakti Vedanta Manor had the facilities, so they did everything. But after that, all the other temples wanted money. <laughs> so we couldn't keep it up. So that's what happened. I mean, it might be a good idea then. <laughs> You're looking for a new program to <laughs> And the Brahma, the ladies can have theirs at the same time. <laughs> okay, another Brahmachari, okay.
Because in America, during those years, that was 2008, I did the first one, it was the, uh, you know, the brahmacharis were really getting slim in numbers. <laughs> and there was a process of attrition. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. But Grihe Tako, Bone Tako, Sabda Hari Bone Tako. So no matter what ashram you're in, become Krishna conscious. That's the, that's the bottom line, like that. But don't, don't think it's ashram, it's Krishna. And as Lord Chaitanya says, we have to chant the holy names of the Lord and develop a taste for chanting, and then one can you know, be successful in whatever ashram. This is the whole thing. We have to develop that taste. If we don't get a taste for chanting, we can get a taste for kirtan. That's not hard, right? Kirtan was... But getting a taste for japa. Ooh. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. <laughs> Rama. Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna. Okay. Oh, no. 14 more rounds. Oh, <laughs> God, save me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, now only 13. Oh. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hurry, rum, hurry, rum, rum, hurry. Oh, okay, Hare Krishna. Okay, zoom. Boy, that was a good round. <laughs> that was my best one. <laughs> now I got it down. I know how to chant now. <laughs> There's a story. One man he's chanting, snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, 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 room, 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 snicker, snicker, and he dies. And he goes to his land and he wakes up and he sees these two guys there. He says, "Who are you?" He said, "I'm Snicker. This is Room. You've been chanting our name." Yeah, so you know, we have to Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare. And there's the, we used to say there's three kinds of ajapa. There's there's radar japa, there's uh, jipper japa, and dive bomber japa. <laughs> radar japa is this is radar japa. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Krishna. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Hare. Make sure you catch. Oh, she's wearing that same sari again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Ram Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And then, then jibber jabber. Hare Krishna. Yeah, really, no kidding. Right? <laughs> wow, where did you hear that? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Really, tell me more. Oh, wait a minute, let me finish this one mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare huh, What else you got to say? I'll tell you more later. Tomorrow's Japa Piri got a lot more to tell you. <laughs> That's called Jibber Japa. And then we have the, Bra the Brahmacharis are expert. Bomber Japa. <laughs> so, that was quite common. It still is. <laughs> yeah, 
So please avoid those three kinds of stuff. <laughs> Prabhupada said, sit properly. <laughs> sit properly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah, okay. These are all the intricacies of the things you should not do. <laughs> okay, any questions? <laughs> okay. Who's first? Wow, so many hands at once. <laughs> we, we Sometimes we give a class and then we see somebody scratching. Oh, you got a question? No, no, I'm just scratching. I didn't say, say ask something anyway. <laughs> no questions. Okay. Huh? No way scratching. It's too, it's kind of risky. You might get caught. <laughs> Question, all right. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for your class, nice class. Um, it's I, not a I nice know. class, you're just saying that. <laughs> no, no. no, this is because probably my question will be a little bit more harder. It's um, regarding to sannyas, I mean, I don't know much about sannyas, but... Well, okay, I'll, sh I'll teach you. <laughs> is, there, is there any difference? Come tomorrow, and I'll have the clippers ready, and I have some nice colored, extra colored orange clothes for you. Oh, no, 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 I'm not interested in the sannyas. But my, I'm, but my dhotis are a little too small for you, so we'll tie two of them together. And, <laughs> and, and you'll be all ready. And you'll look like Lord Chaitanya. Whoa! There he is. Alakananda, Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> That'll be his new name, Alakananda Maharaj. <laughs> hey! You can write home to your mother and tell her the good news. <laughs> okay. Second question. <laughs> Are sannyasis always so funny? <laughs> No, most of us are quite boring. <laughs> but, but you're not boring, sannyas. No, I was uh, wondering about sannyas. What is the difference between sannyas that Lord Chaitanya took and sannyas that um, nowadays, um, um, like devotees in Iskon are taking? It's a little bit different when you are yeah. reading. Well, Lord Chaitanya did take a sannyas from a Mayavadi. So he took Ekadandya sannyas. He didn't take Vaishnav sannyas, Tridanda sannyas, because that was the climate at the time. The Mayavadis were more prominent, and so he stayed within the tradition. But he was obviously the supreme personality of Godhead, so he didn't he didn't have to take sannyas. But he did it in order to. Why did Lord Chaitanya take sannyas? This is who. This is like a seminar in itself. Not, not just a class. There's a lot of reasons why. There's the internal reasons which go back to Krishna and Vrindavan. Why Krishna, why Krishna did something in Vrindavan that caused him to have to later to give up to take sannyas, but that's a whole story. The He took it from Keshava Bharati, and Bharati was from the... Uh, Bhartavi Bharati Sampradaya. Later on, when Prakasananda Saraswati was talking to Lord Chaitanya, he said, you are coming from Bharati Sampradaya. That's an inferior Sampradaya. We can raise you to the Saraswati Sampradaya. But Lord Chaitanya wasn't interested in that. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas because he wanted to convert the Mayavadis, and he did. He knew, unless he was a sannyasi, he was not able to preach to the Mayavadis. But even when he was a sannyasi, when he, was a, when he went to, uh, what, was it, that, what was the name of that place where Lord Chaitanya converted the sannyasis? Benares. Benares, yeah, Benares. Um, he did it in the most interesting way. 60,000 sannyasis headed by Prakasananda Saraswati. He came into the assembly, and Lord Chaitanya, he, 
he washed his feet, which was traditional, you wash your feet at the door, and he stayed in that place. He didn't come on and sit amongst the sannyasis. That place is considered to be unclean. Prakasananda Saraswati noticed his effulgence and then started to preach to him. And, you know, he's, and Lord Chaitanya uses the, used the principle of humility. He said, you know, you, 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 you're just a sentimentalist. You're singing and dancing with a bunch of sentimentalists. Why don't you come with us and study Vedanta? And Lord Chaitanya said, well, my, my spiritual master considered me a fool, not qualified to study Vedanta, so therefore he told me to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> and his humility and his bodily effulgence were so attractive that he got the attention of all the, all the Mayavadis. And then he started to speak. And when he spoke, he started to speak the glories of Vedanta and the glories of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. It took him, what we say, these tactics in order to get their attention. And when he did, they all converted and all became Vaishnavas. He converted 60,000 months. And that was Lord Chaitanya's reason. Lord Nityananda took married life so he could preach to the Grihastas. Lord Nityananda is Avaduta. He doesn't need to get married. <laughs> He's on the highest spiritual platform. But he did it so he could preach to the Grihastha ashram. So both Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda sacrificed in order to reach us different classes of people. And he also inspired his devotees to do the same thing. He wanted to reach all kinds of people within the society. So that was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why he took sannyas was to convert the Mayavadis, and he did. There were other reasons too, because um, to take sannyas means to actually to gain respect. Before he wasn't a sannyasi, when he was preaching, he wasn't getting the respect he needed for people to listen. And so in order to for people to because people listen to sannyasis when they speak, and therefore he used that as an opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness. But you can preach from any ashram, but people have a tendency to become more attentive when you have a certain position. Although the position doesn't mean you're more advanced, it just gives you more facility. That's all it means. So Lord Chaitanya's sannyas was different. It was ekadanda. But that's why Lord, when Lord, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda were traveling on their way to Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya asked Lord Nityananda to carry his danda for him. And Lord Chaitanya broke the danda in three, piece, piece, three pieces and threw it in the Alakananda River. <laughs> Yeah. And then Lord Chaitanya said, where's my danda? And Lord Dityananda said, well, you were in ecstasy and you fell on the danda and it broke. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Chaitanya said, you know, all the demigods reside in the danda. You, I'm not walking with you anymore. I can't trust you. So either you go ahead of me or you go, go behind me. You can't walk with me. <laughs> so he broke Lord Chaitanya's danda because he, because Lord Nityananda saw it was an ekadanda, mayavadi danda, and he was also thinking, why does the supreme personality of God have to have to, to take renunciation? Lord Lord Nityananda didn't really find much happiness in seeing Lord Chaitanya take sannyas. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, yeah, thank His you. sannyasas was a lot different, yeah. Yeah. 
You know, if you take sannyasa, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> It's this good is idea. not good for me. Yeah. Not good, okay. <laughs> Somebody, Prabhupada, the devotees were talking to Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, why do so many devotees want to take sannyas? So Jayapataka Maharaj says, because they want to do whatever they want. <laughs> Become independent. <laughs> but that's, it's not like that. Don't think that's the, the actual reality. Because you have to follow Padam Padam, you have to follow in the footsteps, otherwise it's useless. So sannyasa is meant for preaching, like that. But anyone can preach. But for travel, for traveling and preaching, sannyasa is, is, is there. Because once you take sannyasa, you have to travel, at least for some time at least 30 years or more. <laughs> and then after something, probably that after something is established, then you can s sit in one place. And he said the main business of a sannyasi is to write. Mm -hmm. Write books and preach. Okay, so anything else? Okay, I think I'm keeping you up too late. Thank you for the cookies. Oh, question. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> okay, so I'll let you go. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Srila Prabhupada, Sri Dandi Sanyas, Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Sri Vishwarupa Mahotsava, Ki Jai. Gaur Pimanande. Just throw cookies, please. Thank you.